red background for this Robert Johnson poster with some blacks and browns mixed in. The good old garbage bag technique of creating texture. I really like the way this kind of looks. Four templates for this one because I knew that I was going to be doing a lot of the detail work with airbrush and pen, the tools, things like that. So I just needed to block out the colors. Setting the colors with flames really wasn't effective. It's was just too cold and damp. So I just let the layers dry for a couple hours um, because otherwise the paper sticks to the paint between the templates. This is that stool blanket. I just wanted to add a little sim similar texture to the background. It kind of blended it in a little bit. My goal is to keep it in the warmer colors. That's why I was using mostly the browns and tans and ivory. So rather than using white, I used ivory for things like the shirt and the handkerchief and the tuning knobs and even teeth and eyes I used the ivory just to kind of keep the whole thing this kind of warm look. There's uh, the eyes and the teeth. Here's a quick little highlight for the front of the hat. Here's that glitter blast that's fun to use for the tie stripes. It really pops in person, especially in the sun. Now one of my favorite parts, of course, is the halo around the image. I really enjoy spraying this on and then pulling away the template to see the effect. Time for some highlighting now with one-shot lettering enamel white reduced with turpentine using my Iwata Eclipse airbrush and probably about 60 pounds worth of air pressure. I didn't really like the way it came out on the skin tone. It just, it's just, so I went back over it with some light brown. Looking at the photo reference studio shot, it almost looks like he was just blasted with some kind of light source straight on. You can see there's not even any shadow uh, below his right foot. There is a colorized version of this that looks pretty cool. Looks like it's been used for different publishing purposes. Also looks like it may have been done digitally, but I'm not sure. I decided to use Sharpies rather than the airbrush or a brush to do all the detail work especially with something very mechanical like a guitar with a lot of straight edges and circles, things like that. Here I'm using the template fretboard to line up my frets and strings and a silver Sharpie. For me, facial details are the make it or break it, especially for a portrait. I really like to get it, this as accurate as I possibly can. Once we dial that in, I feel like we're home free, but this is the real critical part, in my opinion. The Robert Johnson trademark long agile fingers. I decided to pinstripe his suit using the Steve Kafka 5 aught script liner. This was a lot of fun to just flow right through all the folds of the clothing. It really worked out well. If you do any kind of brush detail work like this at all, a set of these brushes are going to serve you well. Low light and shadow time is one of my favorites. 
This is where the whole thing just starts to really come to life and start to breathe. I just love the way this really brings out the depth and highlights of the image. This last handwritten note by Robert, which is also on his tombstone, interested me, so I went ahead and included that on the poster. It took a long time to recreate this. I wanted to try to be as true to the um, note as I could be with the detail brush, uh, but it proved to be uh, take a long time to complete. This apparent signature of his also floating around out there interested me too, so I included that. These ivory letters turned out to be too light for my taste, so I went ahead and dusted them with black with the airbrush. I went ahead and printed out a record label, and here I'm just spray mounting it onto the poster. I chose this one for the color. Um, the title of this song, if you're interested, is Kind Hearted Woman. And of course my signature black border halo around the whole thing brings this project to completion. Sure hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks so much for watching.